Hello learners, I'm making this video lecture to discuss the poem Apologies for Living On by Meena Kandasamy. I have made a PPT for you. Let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, here is a picture of all the books that she has published all her poetry books. And most of her poems uh, represent, you know, feminist ideologies. She uses the language of subversion to challenge patriarchy. She criticizes patriarchy. She uh, presents a critical approach towards the gendered based society, the, the hierarchical structure based on gender. So I will move with the critical explanation of the poem. And I'm sure you all have gone through the text of the uh, text, uh, uh, Apologies for Living On. Now, the poet, Meena Kandasamy, she opens the poem with an apology. And that is actually a sarcastic tone because she says that she is offering an apology for living on. She is offering an apology because saying sorry, saying uh, giving apologies is easier. And usually in the you know society, which is uh, structured uh, um, on gender hierarchies where the male gender is at the top, and then the female, and then the next other kinds of uh, possibilities of gender. So in such a, you know, structured society, uh, always, it is always the, uh, you know, the, the genders that are located at the margin of the society, they say, sorry, they apologize, okay? It is always there. Uh, it, it is up to, it is always upon them to uh, offer an apology. So the poet is saying that, you know, once upon a time, there was a time time when she would make free choices, when she would uh, dream, when she would be very ambitious, okay? But, uh, you know, due to the, uh, due, to, due to the eve teasing, due to the haunting experiences of patriarchy, patriarchal culture, due to the uh, culture of objectifying women, she is unable to live freely. She is unable to accomplish those desires. She is unable to walk freely in the society. So her social mobility is very restricted, very confined. Okay. So she says that it is such a prison it's that she is locked inside uh, this social space. She is locked and she wishes to go back to that secured place, uh, you know, of her mother's womb when she was inside her mother's womb and she had no idea about these, uh, you know, these cultures of objectifying women uh, when she was not a victim of male gaze. So you can read through the slide. Uh, I have uh, shared the slide as well in, in the LMS. So yeah, so she recalls that time when she would, you know, find solace looking at the stars and uh, the night sky. And, uh, you know, there is a contrast between a darkness and the light of the stars. So, you know, usually uh, when, when, when opposites are compared, like with darkness and light, uh, it is usually comprehended as uh, having hope in dark times. It can also be, you know, in, uh, you know comprehended that, um, you know, she is unable to find light in, in the dark, uh, so in this dark social structure, which is, which is based on gender hierarchies. Then she says that, you know, uh, because of her fearful experience, she feels that that the darkness is uh, engulfing her. She is imprisoned in that darkness. And then, you know, she uh, 
you know she she actually uses some strong phrases of molestation uh, bottom pan patting uh, breast pinching okay so these phrases directly calls out the culture of objectifying women he directly calls out those uh, people who exercise their male gaze okay who 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 fetishize women's bodies who uh, who ogle at women's bodies okay so she says that she kept running away from from these uh, events she kept running away and uh, she stopped she was stopped she was trembled with fear she was stopped stopped at the tracks of fear and when she turned and looked at the sky she found that even the moon is another immodest ogler and lecherous stalker okay so the moon is another immodest ogler so it's like you know if uh, you are being looked at constantly by someone that is the time when you are being objectified you your the other person who is looking at you for a longer duration then that person is uh, ascribing meaning to your body that person is you know not exactly conveying but comprehending or reading your body labeling it okay interpreting your body so the moon was also another immodest ogler the moon did not give her a delight the moon also you know posed a threat to her security to her freedom and it is another immodest ogler so who are the other or the you know uh, prior lecherous stalker and immodest ogler okay so it is directly implied that those are the men so you know she is now when we you know when you end the end reading the poem and when you go back when you start reading it again from the first line you will feel that there is a connection between her sarcastic tone of voice that she is offering an apology to the society to the society that uh, objectified or objectifies women okay and then at the end she is saying that uh, you know in this brutal world she is all alone she wanted to walk freely but she kept running she kept running from the molesters she kept running from uh, the men who ogle at women's body okay who who keep on reading women's bodies okay so uh, you know she is apologetic she is using the sarcasm sarcastic tone that she is apologetic that you know women are not free in the society she is apologetic that uh, women have physical existence women have physical existence because their physical existence the the uh, physical existence of the body itself is uh, you know is 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 objectified by men it's it's a uh, uh, it's an um, you know a way to 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 please men it is it is a medium for uh, sensual and sexual pleasure to men okay so it is that she is criticizing that society which uh, you know defines or sets women's roles she is criticizing that society which uh, ascribes meaning to women's bodies okay how a woman should look how a woman should uh, behave how a woman's uh, body is supposed to be so she is criticizing the uh reserved comportments uh you know reserved comportments for women in a gender based hierarchical social structure now what are the issues of the poem she uh, speaks of women's physical desires uh, she speaks of uh, women's uh, emotional desires ambitions everything but they are unable to achieve all those because women are not free in that society in such a society 
then uh, women's body, when, when women's body is being objectified, uh, it is like women's physical existence is a matter of regret, okay? So women's physical body is always connected to its vulnerability, okay? Its vulnerability. So even, uh, you know, uh, someone, when, when a man or when someone is looking at women's bodies, when, when that in a certain way, when they are og ogling at a woman's body, then that is also a kind of violence, okay? So women's bodies uh, always uh, go through, uh, you know, violence. Now, uh, yes, then uh, her poem represents a voice of a rebellion who is challenging the gender apathy and creating a space of social mobility for women. Now, the purpose of writing such a poem, okay, now, when she is directly hinting at, not exact, not even hinting, she is directly calling out the agents of patriarchy, the agents who are uh, supporting or who exercise male gaze. So she, in a way, using the language of subversion, she is creating a space for women in the society, uh, an equal space for women in the society, because as people will get aware, okay, they when, when through, through her poem, when people will get aware uh, about male gaze, about stalking, about the violence inflicted on women's bodies, okay, so psychological, emotional violence, uh, so also physical violence, okay, uh, so the molestation, rape, these are physical violence. And even when someone is looking, ogling, that is, uh, you know, psychological violence on women's bodies. So uh, she is she is uh, calling out those agents of uh, male gaze, those who exercise male gaze. And she is, in a way, creating a space for women in that same society. Okay? So... That's all, students. Uh, hope uh, you have understood the poem and to understand a poem better, uh, keep reading it aloud, keep, uh, you know, interpreting. Okay, thank you so much.